Hi, welcome to this tutorial. In this example, I will show how can we make a camera follow the rotation of another object by using PID controller. This can be useful if we want, for instance, have a camera following the head orientation of one character without being affected by his translation or by any animation artifact. In this level, we have some static objects, just to have something to show. A camera, where I attach a cone just to be able to see it when I execute the, the level. This camera has attached also a scene renderer 2D component to be able to render the, the image to a texture and show it to show it uh, via a widget. All this is only for the demo purposes. The most important component in this uh, camera is this one here, the camera PID controller, which instantiate two PIDs to control the camera rotation. I will explain later how this works. I also have an actor who will be uh, followed by the camera. Its rotation will be tracked and followed by this camera. I will run this level in simulator mode to be able to see all the objects. Let's see okay. how it works. You see, if I rotate this, this cone, also the camera rotates. Also, I can produce a rotation this way. And you see the camera rotating. Also, you can see the, the PID controllers attached to the, to the camera are able to filter out like uh, really fast um, movements. So it, it uh, produces a, um, uh, a movement, an output really, really smooth. So you, you can filter like artifacts or something like that. Also, the thing, the interesting thing is that this uh, is immune to translation. If you translate, uh, produce a translation of the of this uh, object, well, the, the the camera stays at the same orientation. It responds only to changes on the uh, direction. So this is useful, as I said, if you want to track, for instance, the head of an NPC and make the camera follow the, the, the orientation as a sort of look-at operation. Or if you want the, the per perception cones attached to your character follow the head rotation, this will, this will be very helpful for that also. As I said, the core of the behavior is in the in the component attached to the camera, this one camera PID controller. And I will explain I will explain how uh, this works. So basically I will open the blueprint here. Oh, well it's this uh, uh, component I create here here via blueprint. So how this works? So the first thing you have to notice is that here I have a variable, uh, public variable that's posed to the blueprint called actor to follow. Here I will pass our reference the object I want to follow. So I will look for the rotation of this object passed here as a reference. Okay, the first thing on the begin begin play, what I do is create the or initial well create uh, first the PIDs. If you see, I construct two PID controllers. One to control the your, uh, your rotation or rotation around the, the Z axis. So uh, I need one controller to control that this angle and another PID controller 
to control the pitch rotation or rotation around the Y axis. Once I construct my PID controllers, the next step is the initialization. First thing is set the process variable uh, mean and max values, which in this case, since it's an angle that I want to control, um, that will uh, the variation will be between minus 180 and 180. So I set the the man and mean and max values. Next, for this same controller, I need to set the proportional coefficient, uh, integral, and derivative. For this kind of control, it's enough to have a proportional component. So this value, actually, I had it right now is 20, but I start this value at 1, and I increase it progressively until having the response I wanted in terms of speed. I do the same thing for the other controller, the pitch PID, uh, limits, min and max, and proportional value of 20 also. And that's all in the begin play. Then, each frame or each tick, if you want, I will do two things. First, the first thing I, I have to verify that I have an actor to follow actually. See if this value is valid. If not, it makes no sense to do anything else here. There is nothing to follow, I do nothing. But if I have an actor to follow, what I have to do is grab its rotation and the forward vector, the the vector that points to the to the front of the of this object. Actually, we'll use this vector and I will pass it as a parameter to this function. This function, what it does is take this uh, direction, the direction of the of the actor to follow and compare compare that direction to my direction to the direction of the camera actually it will it make a in by using those two vectors it uh, measures the geo rotation and the pitch rot or the geo angle and the pitch angle between those two now this is my variable i want to control so the next step is use those variables uh, to process the PID. You see here, PV is the process variable. So this one is the PID to control the yo rotation. So I pass the current yo uh, rotation to my to my reference, which is the actor to follow, and I want that difference, that rotation, to be zero. I want to be my yo rotation to be exactly the same as my uh, actor to follows rotation. So the reference, the value that I want to uh, achieve is zero. So that is my reference. I want this difference between those two rotations to be zero. So I pass my current yo and I want that to arrive to zero. This uh, process PID will produce a control or a your rotation that I have to apply to the camera to a right to zero actually to align myself or align the camera to the actor to follow. So I save this in a variable called geo control. I do the same for the pitch. I use the pitch variable I just measure, pass it as a process variable. My reference again will be zero because I want to be aligned with my actor to follow and the output the, or the pitch rotation that I have to apply this frame uh, I will save it in a variable called pitch control once the computation is done I apply the rotation to the actor locally so what I do is okay I, with those variables I create a rotator and I say okay apply a delta rotation or add this rotation to my actor to compensate and that is all okay so here again uh, one more time uh, you see uh, this is my camera let me stop this again this is my camera which has attached the camera PID controller and I pass the actor I want to follow here uh, I choose well the tracked actor object is here I select it and now uh, it will start to follow the orientation of that object 
and as I told you, as I showed you before, well, the, this uh, follows the orientation. So, uh, but uh, well, I can choose anything, any other object if I want. Let's say I don't want to follow this object, but this cube, for instance. So I can change that. Go to my, my camera PID controller attached to the camera and change the object I want to follow. Let's say I want to follow the cube here. Select the cube, and now we will start to follow this cube. This one uh, will follow the orientation of that cube. Oh, well, I need to make sure the cube is movable. Oh, you see, it's static. I need to make it neural because it won't change its position or rotation otherwise. So once that is done, I can run again this, and now you will see that it doesn't respond to the rotation of this one because I just it's not following that anymore. So responding to the rotation of this thing. So you see. You see? So it's uh, working. Well, thank you very much for for uh, seeing this video. I hope uh, this is helpful for you. And if you have any question, uh, don't hesitate to contact me via email or leave, leave a com uh, comment in the marketplace or the PID controller. Also, this project, I will leave it in a, in a, in a GitHub uh, uh, link that uh, be on the description of this, of this video. So you can go, grab it, and make the modifications if you want. Be aware that you will need the, the PID controller plugin uh, that other that I sell on the on the market on real marketplace. Thank you very much.